Welcome back, everybody, to the Nosebleed Sports Podcast. We got a big one here for you today. Opening day coming up. Adam, I'm not even going to ask you how you're doing. I'm just going to bring in. Doesn't even matter. Going to bring in our guest today. <laughs> uh, so opening day tomorrow, and we have with us special thanks, Mr. Bobby Nightingale Jr. from the Cincinnati Enquirer, beat writer for the Reds. Bobby, how are you, sir? Good. It's a, it'll be my first opening day uh, in Cincinnati, so kind of looking forward to seeing what it'll be like tomorrow. Are you Very going cool. to the parade? I, I, I'll walk past it. I won't. I'm not going to stay around too long. <laughs> I don't. I don't blame you. I'll tell you what. It's a. It's a. It's a crazy day. This town. I mean, I'm sure you've heard. Yeah, this I've town heard gets. a lot. Yeah. So now you you're you you're from what Minnesota or San Diego, Minnesota? Those two places. Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. Now is opening day in Minnesota as big, or does it get a lot of uh, fanfare like this? No, no, not even close. I mean, it'll be a sold-out game, but there's no parades. There's no – I mean, just seeing the pictures, are, they look insane just from last year and any year before it. But um, from what I've heard, I mean, St. Louis might be close, but other than that, I don't think many places do it, you know, kind of the, it the way Cincinnati does. Yeah, it's it's big time. It, it's the thing that – so I always feel like, okay, opening day has got to be huge everywhere, but the thing about it is, like, we have a parade every year – and there it's a sold out game and everything no matter how bad the reds are sometimes like people know sometimes going into the season it might be rough and uh and people still come out like crazy for opening day you got parties everywhere and just it's a, it's a holiday here yeah i mean when i first took the job here people were talking about just they're like if you if you ever want to know the passion of cincinnati in a baseball town just look at the opening day crowds and imagine if they ever had a, you know, the last two years they've been bad, but if they had a good season, you know, it could be kind of that vibe throughout the whole year. There's right. two big games. It's opening day and then opening night. After that, it'll be right back to, it'll be back <laughs> yeah. to Indy until these boys start showing, uh, showing everybody to, that they know what they're doing. So on that note, man, let's, uh, I want to, I want to know a little bit about you. You're new to Cincinnati. You've been covering the team for, uh, what, uh, not even, I mean, how, when did you come, when did you get here? April last year? Uh, uh, May. May. All right. So there you go. So you started part of the way through the season last year. Let's what, what, let's get a little background. I mean, we all know that your dad is Bob Nightingale from USA Today. You obviously following in his footsteps. Uh, you know, if you're anything like me, my dad was my idol, so I just wanted to do whatever he did. <laughs> so uh, tell us what happened. How'd that all come through? Yeah, I mean, it was. I've always been, you know, big into sports. Probably thanks to him. Um, but I, I never really wanted to write for newspapers. I, you know, everyone makes the jokes, you know, newspapers are dying out and I kind of believe the same thing. And so I went to college for sports broadcasting and I think my junior year was the first time I wrote for the school newspaper. And then it just kind of, I was good at it. So it just kind of stuck. Really? Um, but it was never really my intention to go into newspapers or anything like that. My mom also works for newspapers. Um, huh. when, when they used to have big staffs, sure. but it's been cool. I mean, just being in the same industry as him, I kind of knew what it was like before I started. So that helped, um, just with the travel and everything too. So you didn't start writing in any kind of paper, no high school, nothing until your junior year in college. Yeah. We didn't have a, like we used to do maybe like a, like a newsletter type thing. Just me and my friends, we would joke around and just write about pro sports, but I never did any. Uh, you know, student newspaper type writing until, yeah, junior year of college. There you go. Well, I'll tell you what, man, uh, you know, over the last almost year now, you do you do a heck of a job. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. So where did you go out of college? Uh, so I went to Bradley University um, for four years, and then after that I went to – I interned with MLB.com for one season. Uh, I covered the Detroit Tigers in 2013 – Oh, so man. Jose what? Iglesias, he'll, he'll, he'll be the shortstop for the Reds yeah, to start yeah. this year. Uh, he, he was a rookie back then. That was uh, Verlander, um, and they they were uh, they had a pretty solid – they were solid. Back, did they go to the World Series that year? Uh, they lost in the ALCS, but uh. that was one of the best staffs. It was like like Rick Porcello, who won a Cy mm-hmm. Young, was their fifth starter. So it was just That's like, insane. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Crazy wow. staff. Yes, it is. That's awesome. So then after, after your internship with MLB.com, um, then I, I went to the Lawrence Journal World. It's in Lawrence, Kansas. Uh, covered high school sports for two years, and then I covered the University of Kansas basketball and football for two years. And then the, after that, I came here. 
Very awesome, nice. man. Very nice. Well, welcome, welcome to Cincinnati. Has it been a welcoming city since you've been here? Yeah, it's been great. I live, uh, I live in Newport, but I'm close to downtown, so I feel like I'm a part of everything. Oh yeah, you know, close enough, close enough to see everything. Yeah, yes, no doubt. Very good. All right, man. So let's get into the Reds. What do you say? Yeah, that'd be great. You good with that. All right. So obviously, the biggest, uh, the biggest story right now is Nick Senzel. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, let's be honest. They can say there's a lot of th- right, a lot of reasons that they didn't bring him up, but it's one reason. It's it's to keep him under, uh, keep uh, their options open for an extra year, or, or keep him under control yeah. for another service year, time, yeah. service time. So, uh, when he comes back, first off, it's it's only like a two week wait period, right? Like, well, he's actually he's act. It, it would be 16 days that 16 they had to days. keep him down. Okay, but he actually got hurt. Um, a exactly. Few days ago. That was going to be mm-hmm. my next question. So. Would he even be healthy once that April sixteenth date or what April fifteenth date comes around? Yeah, he's not. He's going to be out for at least. I'd be surprised if he played games in April. He's going to be in a walking boot for a week and week or two, and then after that, it's going to take another maybe two weeks before he can run and be cleared for games. So you're probably looking three weeks at the earliest, maybe maybe a month that he'll miss, and then I mean he still has to play games in AAA before sure. he can come up to the reds so that takes out so so with Jeanette out for what uh five to six how, how long is he out five to six weeks two to three, uh, two to two three, to three, three months. months oh my gosh so with Jeanette out and him out who's what are we doing in center and second to get this year started because I mean it when Jeanette first got hurt I thought maybe it might be a good idea to put Senzel in at second where he's more comfortable and let him get started in 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 the pros at a position he's been at for a while. Obviously that's not going to happen now. So what are we going to have? What are we looking at to start out the year? Yeah, definitely thought that was an option, but they really want to see him continue playing in center just because I think it would be more valuable if he's a really good center fielder versus having a really good second baseman. You can find those a little more easily. So second base, Jose Peraza is going to move from shortstop to second. Uh, The coaches talked to him and he kind of volunteered saying, You know, I have more experience at second than anybody else, so if you want me to play it, I can. Uh, So he'll play second, and then Jose Iglesias, who they signed uh, on a minor league contract, he he made the team, played with the Tigers for the last five years. He'll be the starting shortstop. And then Scott Shebler will be the everyday center fielder. So Um, will we get any time in center? No, it'll be uh, Jesse Winker will be the backup. He'll be the backup. Okay. I I just – this Yesio Puig – trade i gotta be honest with you a lot of people he's a polarizing guy a lot of people can't stand him i kind of i kind of dig the guy i like i like the antics a little bit my cousin here adam can't stand that kind of baseball i kind of <laughs> like it a little bit so we're kind of different in that in that how, how do you how is he how is that personality came in and ha, has it breathed new life into this into this team or is he just another guy no i mean you, you, if you want follow him on social media, Twitter and Instagram, he's always he has like a ton of followers, maybe close to a million on both. He's, he's loud like you, right? and boisterous. That's exactly what he's like in the clubhouse. I mean, he's the loudest guy on the team. The most, the, he, he, it seems like he always has energy. The most energy among everybody. I know people don't like the bat flips and all the, you know, some of the stuff he does, but part of it is just that's how much energy he always has. Yeah. I mean, there's no turning it off with him. How do you feel about it? How you like it? What do you, what do you I, think I, about I think, all that? Yeah, I think he, I, I like the style he plays with. I mean, I think he brings an edge. Obviously, there's times where he goes a little too far. He'll overthrow the cutoff man. Maybe he'll be a little lazy on the field. But he's one of those guys, I remember in one spring training game, he made an error in right field, and he didn't call for a ball, so it dropped in between. So really, it was two errors. And then he hit two home runs in that game. So it's, <laughs> it's one of those, like, yeah, he, he knows how to balance it. If he make if he makes bad plays, he'll try to make up. For he'll it. try to make up. That's for a it. perfect Yasiel Puig game. That's that's, that's exactly exa- what you get, yeah, and that's exactly why Adam is not a fan of him. <laughs> I, I don't hate I, him or anything. You don't hate I him, just... right? It's the mental mistakes. The mental the, or the or the not the mental mistakes. It, yeah, it, when you when you don't call for a ball or you overthrow a cutoff man, that can be that can be helped. It's that and stop licking your bat. No, that's the I mean. best part. I love that. Make out with that bat, man. That's hilarious. It cracks me up. He's got to have so much dirt and grime in that time. <laughs> yeah, that's that's more my uh, yeah my issue with that, I think. There you go. He, like he actually said he doesn't like uh, licking the bats, but it's superstition. He did it once. 
And I now think he hit, got, a, hit a double afterwards, and now he just does it all the time. Yeah, now he does it. Well, that and everybody talks about it, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure he likes when people talk about him. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is okay with me, too. Kind of reminds me of Manny Ramirez, who I was a huge fan of Manny. I love Manny. Mm-hmm. Now, you being from Minnesota, mm-hmm. is it – when you write for the Reds, I mean, when they do good, obviously that makes your job a little easier, easier to write. We talked with Adam Baum on this show a few weeks ago, um, the Xavier beat writer for the Enquirer. He was saying that when they win, it makes his job easier. So, yes, he, he would kind of consider himself a fan, I guess, in that way. You, not being from Cincinnati, are you a fan of the Twins? Are you a Kirby Puckett? old hat or you know what's your what do you do you root for the reds now that you're here how's it work i grew up as a weirdly enough a texas rangers fan I was really a huge juan gonzalez guy oh uh, nice in the 90s nice yes. and pudge rodriguez sure oh, you yeah. gotta love pudge that yeah. was my guy but after that i've been I'm, I'm more of like a fan of players versus teams i wouldn't say i'm like a rangers fan or anything it's just so i, I like certain players and growing up that's who i cheered for and so, so in this job, I, I, I don't know. I feel like I'm one of those guys that either way how the Reds play, it doesn't really affect me too much uh, one way or another. That makes sense. Um, I, I don't mean to jump back, but the uh, – so the outfield situation, we got yeah. – I think a lot of us kind of thought once they got, you know, Puig and Kemp in that deal – and then they, and then we we all kind of realized. So I think Jesse Winker was going to be a guarantee pretty much because he had a great year last year. Um, and then when when they started talking about Nick Senzel being a real candidate to to play center and that he may may be the next starting center fielder, suddenly the outfield is really crowded, right? So I think a mm-hmm. lot of us were kind of expecting either Puig or Kemp or both to kind of maybe be dealt before the season. Um, to try to kind of make room for everybody, and uh, by the way, Philip Irvin is another one. God, that the guy had an was, unbelievable spring, yeah, but he's and, got op- he had options. So you got to right. you got to deal with guys that have options. But but you are looking for your best, you know, your best. If you're t- if you're keeping four outfielders, your best four. So you know, Philip Irvin played as well as anybody. Nick Senzel played as well as anybody. But yeah, I guess options come into it. Do you feel like there's anything like you know? Is there is Dick Williams? kind of looking every single day at possibly moving some playing time some time i'm sure they looked at the possibility probably of kemp uh more so than puig just that like you say clearing up a little bit of space in the outfield and he makes a lot of money and maybe they could get a prospect to back out of it Mm -hmm. but part of it too is they obviously you have a lot of guys that are on the last year of their contracts kemp puig a few of their pitchers yeah um so they do want to win uh this year and kemp the way he hit this spring, I mean, he bailed up a lot of balls. He's going to help you win games if he's in the lineup. So I think it turned into one of those things where they wanted to create as much competition as possible. And it's okay, I mean, if you have a few good guys in AAA. I mean, if you need Philip Irvin down the road where there's a couple of injuries, that's a great guy to turn to. But you see good teams like the Cubs, the Dodgers, they have all these guys that are talented on their bench. And I think that's what the Reds kind of wanted to create was, you know, if – people do get hurt, which Nick Senzel did, um, we're okay. And then we're not going to, you know, we're not just going to have three good outfielders just because there's only three spots. Right. So when, with those, with that, when you bring Nick Senzel up, who's going down? What are they, what are they doing to make room for Senzel in two weeks? Cause you know, they're going to bring him up. Well, not in two weeks when he comes back from his injury, you know, they're going to bring him up. What? <laughs> You're gonna you're gonna have six, five, six. How many outfielders you're gonna keep or, on this or roster? Or are they gonna bring them up? Are they gonna leave them down there for a little while? That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, I think they're just taking it, you know, kind of day by day with Senzel. I mean, obviously he's not he's probably gonna miss the first month, and then they'll just see where they're at in a month. I mean, is everybody healthy? Is everybody performing? If they're not, they can just you know swap him for somebody else. They can always take off a pitcher, and then you have an extra bench spot. So I think they do have options uh, on what they want to do with Senzel. And I do think he'll be up at some point. Um, but he just needs to, you know, stay healthy for a little bit, gain some experience in center field, and just keep hitting the way he does um, that he had in Louisville last year. And he did kind of the spring. And just show that he's still major league ready despite this ankle injury he's got right now. All right. So uh, just to take a quick a, a quick second here. Uh, we didn't really give you a chance to throw any of your Twitter out there. This is Bobby Nightingale, uh, Reds beat writer, Cincinnati Enquirer. You got you, you, you're a good follow. You're, you're on Twitter a lot, very active. You want to throw out your Twitter uh, tweeter handle and 
and uh, let everybody know where you're at? Yeah, it's uh, the at symbol, Nightingale. It's my last name. And then Junior at the end, just J-R. So N-I-G-H-T-E-N-G-A-L-E-J-R. Excellent. Yep, excellent uh, excellent follow. Uh, I, I mean, that's where – I mean, I honestly um, – go to Twitter for like all of my news. So especially in sports, you know, if I need to find something out about the reds, I've always gone to the beat writers pages. I've got, I've got yours now. I'm on board with uh, Bobby Nightingale. You're the first, (laughs) the very first Twitter. uh, uh, I'm going to, to find out exactly what's happening about the reds. It's you you do an awesome job on there. Tell me what it's like. Thanks. Tell me what it's like to be next to a guy like John Fay every day. Do you sit next to him when you're up there? Uh, Yeah. That guy came back. He's amazing. Yeah, he's, his Twitter personality is just a snarky <laughs> throw. Yeah. It's not I like he announces it. it in the press box, so you're just sitting, you know, next to your laptop, and you just see it pop of the pop on the screen, and you start cracking up. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. He's a yeah. He that once again that guy John Fay is one. Of, he's been around for a long time. He's one of my favorites. Dude, we've got some good beat writers. We really town. do. We really do. And the in these young guys like you, Adam Baum coming up. There's there's some other young guys out there. You guys are doing a great job. And you're learning from from some of the best, so uh, keep up the good work. Now, yeah, I mean, I got to work with Faye last year, and you know, yeah. he's he, he's been around he, he's been around everything and you know, oh, yeah. the organization in and out. So, it's been now, fun, it's been fun, fun sitting next to him. Now, John Faye gets to go up and talk to Marty, uh, like every two, three games or whatever. You ever get to mm-hmm. go up there? You you get to go up there and have a little uh, have a little uh, one inning interview with with Marty? Yeah, I want to say I did it maybe. 10 or 11 times last year it's we rotate you know uh per site each one so mlb.com the athletic and us yeah. uh, the inquirer and then Faye, me and Faye just flip flop you know based on who's who's there or if we're both there we'll just um yeah. one of us will take it sure um but yeah it's it's obviously cool getting to know marty it sucks this is the last season um but ni- nicest guy you can meet yeah I, that's why i heard go. Tell me about the cowboy. Everybody wants to know about the cowboy. Best cowboy story you got? Ooh, I don't know if I can say any on Put air. Put you on a- <laughs> <laughs> I figured that was going to be the case. <laughs> That's all right. You, he, you he's a smart baseball guy, though. I mean, he you know, really he knows, is. He yeah. knows pitching. Yeah, he played uh, college baseball with like Rafael Palmero. I mean, their college. I can't remember where it was. If it was Mississippi State, Mississippi State. That was it. Unbelievable. Will Clark, uh, Rafael Palmero, wow. wow. him. I mean. Just a stud of a team. Anyway, uh, that's besides the point. Um, so, while we're talking about pitchers, the 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 Cowboy, Robert Stevenson makes the mm-hmm. team. So, him and Whistler were fighting out for the bullpen. Whistler gets sent down, which is actually be, basically being released because he had no more options left. Neither did Stevenson. So, they were keeping one or the other. Stevenson's been here for a long time. They've put a lot of money and dedicated a lot of time into this kid. Mostly to be a starter, he's making this team as in the bullpen. Will are they? Is there any rumblings of him getting to 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 get some starts? In the, I mean, obviously we've we've got a pretty you know our rotation is it's not a hundred percent set, but I mean it's basically we've got our five guys. Once Alex Wood gets back, so will he get a chance to start this year? If uh, everybody, even if everybody stays healthy, no, he won't. No, he'll be strictly a bullpen guy. Um, Maybe at the end of the year, if, if the season went that way downhill, yeah. and they just wanted to test it out again. But as long as, as long as you know the first four months of the season, he's not. He'll just stay in the bullpen. Gotcha. Speaking of the bullpen, um, Michael Lorenzen. So they they started this uh, kind of experiment with him, where they got him some time in the outfield. So he he gets at bats in spring games. Um, you know, really exciting. One of the most exciting things about the season last year was his little streak where he hit was it home four runs home in, runs, yeah, in like a week that. or something. Yeah. Like. Um, so, what are the possible? I mean, obviously the the outfield is way overcrowded. Yeah, but just throw throw another guy in there. Why not? Let's have seven outfielders on the roster. Yeah, what, <laughs> yeah, but what are the you know what is the scenario where he might get at bats at least? I mean, I guess he could pinch hit in games, but how is he going to be the third or fourth bat off the bench? Maybe something like that. Yeah, because they're they're only keeping four guys on the bench right now. Right. Um, so it's a shorter bench than usual. So he he's the fifth option. I mean, and any whether unless he's already pitched and he's already came out of the game, he's available to hit at any point. He's, I mean, he's the best hitting pitcher they've got. 
And I think you will see him in center field at some points. I mean, he's he might be the best defensive center fielder on the team right now. That's wow. his. He uh, naturally played center field. I mean, that's what he grew up playing in high school and even in the in college and minors. From what yeah, I understand, yeah, he didn't start pitching until his uh, sophomore year of college. Right. So he's he 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 grew up playing center field. It's his natural spot. I mean, he made the USA team as a center fielder uh, in college. So he, he he's confident. I mean, he could do it. You know, in a heartbeat. All right. So speaking of Lorenzen. Does anybody got bigger biceps than that dude in that team, or does or does he or does he just get his sleeves uh, tailored a little smaller so they look bigger? <laughs> he's a strong dude, but uh, Derek no Dietrich, he's on he's on yeah. the bench yeah. this year. Yeah, he, he'd give Lorenz in a run for his money. Really, in terms right, of right. like a body there sculpting you contest. There you, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, nobody would give me a run for my. I think I, I think I'd take them all down. I'm, my body shape is round, and I, and I enjoy every second of it. <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, I do I do got a couple other questions for you. Uh, okay, I want to go back. I read something about I read something uh, about you. One of the first articles about you in the Cincinnati on Cincinnati dot com, and uh, it was a little little backstory. Uh, you and you and Barry Bonds used to uh, you and Barry Bonds used to do some juice together. Is that what I understand? <laughs> Be yeah, careful. <laughs> hey, his he's trainer, out. His trainer uh, visited my house. Um, I don't remember how old I was. Maybe the eighth grade. Yeah. Um, my dad was doing a story on him. And he's like, we, we had a few free weights in the house. And he's like, hey, you want me to show you how to use them? And I was like, sure. And it ended up being like an, an hour tutorial. Like, I don't even really? know how. I can't, I can't remember how he did it. But, I mean, even with just a few free weights, I mean, he went through basically every exercise you could possibly do. And. I wish I remembered even, you know, a fourth of them. <laughs> I hear you. Um, but, th- but then he was like, you know, if, if you want me to keep helping you out, you can send me, like, your progress charts and all this type of stuff. And I didn't, but, you know, a couple years down the road, that's when the Balco stuff hit. And Man, um, you could have been know. huge, dude. <laughs> Just think, if you would have stuck with that dude, he could have got you places. For some of the wrong reasons. But. Hey, you know what? You, you might have had a hat that was three sizes bigger than what it was when you started, but <laughs> you'd have been looking good, brother. It could have been like, you know, in the the Bucko scandal, it could have been like Bonds, Marion Jones, like an Olympic sprinter, and then like a ninth and, grader. And Bobby, <laughs> Bobby Nightingale Jr. <laughs> I like that. All right, so uh, I, I do got another question for you. So, uh, Brandon Finnegan, you mm-hmm. were around while Finnegan was uh, – Finnegan had his little issues last year. Uh, mm-hmm. where he kind of went off and got sent down and all that stuff happened. Between him and Homer Bailey, there's all kinds of issues. He Did he have the wor- – I mean, he couldn't have had a worse spring. Yeah, I mean, I think – Does he have a chance on this guys team? That, does he have a place? Does he have a chance? Uh, he's He's got to pitch better. I mean, it's just one of those things right now where it's like if one bad thing goes wrong, he's kind of snowballs. Right. And he walks a lot of guys right now. I mean, if he gets back to throwing strikes – He's got a chance. I mean, he could be, he could make the team as a reliever probably. Um, but right now he's just he doesn't he's not consistent enough and he's he's probably behind a, a few more guys like Cody Reed, Sal Romano, um, Jimmy Hergett. I mean, he's he's probably behind a few more yeah. relievers in AAA before he gets before they would call his name back up. Gotcha. All right. Um speaking of control, Stevenson, his control is it back? Has he got some control this year? Is he gonna walk twelve guys in eleven innings? What's he gonna do? Yeah, he he changed the grip on his fastball, and he said that's the big difference. He said it, and he's been trying harder to throw pitches up in the zone, kind of high strike zone, not in the middle of the plate. Um, but he thinks that makes a difference. He walked one guy in five innings, I think, this spring. Right. So he looks better. I mean, but the I think the coaching staff, when they chose him over Whistler, the main thing was he has better pure stuff, and they just want to work with him and. You know, if, if it ends up working out, great. If it doesn't, you know, I mean, it just delays when they had to. He's out of options. The, yeah. The time they would have to designate him for assignment. Sure. Yeah, he won't be a back end of the uh, of the bullpen guy anyway, right? I mean, you kind of have no, those guys more, set. Uh, That's pretty much set between Peralta, Lorenzen, um, uh, Iglesias, obviously. Hughes. Hughes. Garrett, even what Garrett, I love that Garrett kid, and I, I I could sit here and go over each individual player here and ask you about him, and I don't want to do that to you, but I could. Um, uh, there's one, there is one other guy I want to ask you about. Kyle mm-hmm. Farmer had a terrific spring. This kid is is 
does he have a chance at being the backup catcher on this, or has Casale got that thing pretty much locked up? Casale's got that locked up, but Farmer might play, you know, you might use Casale, or if Casale starts and Barnhart's off the bench, you can use those guys as a pinch hitter and not worry about, uh oh, we're out of catchers. Mm-hmm. Um, so they could, they could pinch hit for the pitcher or something like that. Sure. And that gives him more options. And Farmer, he played every position in the infield, including shortstop throughout the spring. He was a college shortstop. So he's one of those guys that you feel comfortable no matter where he is no on the field. And he just gives you a lot of protection if you want to pinch hit with other guys. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Right. Um, okay, so we'll uh, we'll start wrapping it up here. But, but really quick, um, the – so, you know, brand new – not a brand new team. A lot of guys are back. But there are several guys on this team that were not on the opening day roster last year. Um, mm-hmm. So it's a new look. They made a lot of acquisitions over the, you know, over the off season. And so people are excited. It looks on paper like they're going to be better. Um, people are really excited about this team going into the year. Um, the only problem is they might be playing in the best division in baseball. Um, what do you think? How do you think the National League Central is going to stack up? I mean, are the Reds going to finish? Are they, are they still a lock to finish fourth or fifth? Or do you think they can make a run for second or third in this division? I I think third would probably be the highest I would think they could go right now. I mean, if everything went right, I mean, sure, they could be in contention. But some of those teams, like the Cardinals, you know, they got a lot better and they were good last year. The Cubs are still the Cubs. The Brewers, you know, were one game from the World Series last year. So, I mean, it is, like you said, it's one of the, it's probably the toughest division in baseball. It's just going to be a lot of teams beating up on each other. And I think the most important thing is a strong start. Uh, the Reds, 13 of the Can't first do three games, out of 18. Yeah, exactly. 13 of their first 16 games are against divisional teams. So you should know in mid-April, you know, whether they're – Where they stack up. You know, they can how they can stack up against those guys. Yeah, no doubt. All right, so tomorrow, opening day, are you the, – the, the guys from, from Cincinnati – from the Enquirer or Cincinnati.com, or are you guys doing anything? You got What are you doing for opening day tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, our website will be – have crazy coverage. Ron, uh, Commissioner Manfred will be in town uh, as a part of the parade. We'll have, I think, five or six people covering the game. Um, so if you just go to Cincinnati.com, that's where all our coverage will be. And Adam Baum, who you guys had on the show, he'll be one of the guys out there. Um, so I'll see him in the press box too. Nice. So he's going to be doing a little Reds. I, that uh, Real quick, before before I let you go, I always wanted to know this. when So like for him, Xavier season's over. Mm-hmm. What does he do? from now until Xavier season start wait for you when the Reds, you know, six months, what do you do for six months? I mean, well, not really. Yeah. I guess it's like, I guess it's really like four months cause spring training's up in February. So from September, October, if you're lucky till February, what are you doing? Yeah. Usually I would help out on uh, maybe the Bengals or college sports last year. They had the managerial search. So that took my time. Yeah. And then you have the GM meetings, Reds fast winter meetings. So there's, it feels like every two, two, three weeks, there's always some event going on baseball wise that attracts your attention. And then you got to stay tuned to trades and free agency and all that. Um, so, so it's not really too much downtime. It, you might not be writing every day, but it always feels like you're staying something busy. that week that you have to do. Gotcha. Yeah. That's good. That's, that's good. See, I always wondered that because, you know, for me, I'm like, ah, the Reds are done. All right, let's move on to the Bengals. All right, Bengals are done. All right, I'm moving on to Xavier <laughs> basketball. And, yeah, you know, move, you know, I move on. You guys, you guys are, are are beat riders. So I guess you stay, you still stay busy. Hey, listen, we really appreciate you coming on, taking some time with us. Um, I don't know if you ever want to do this again. I'd love to have you on because I want. I'd love to talk about Philip Irvin a little bit more. I'd love to talk about the FC Cincinnati slash Cincinnati Reds advertising stuff if, if yeah. you, i'd love to get into some of that stuff but i don't want to take too much of your time tonight so if you want to someday down the line maybe we can do this again yeah definitely I, my, my pleasure coming on definitely keep in touch i'll def, definitely come back on thank you so much bobby that was awesome yeah thanks for having me all right have a good night man and uh good luck tomorrow have fun at the your first cincinnati reds opening day i'm, I'm excited for you yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I should be scared or excited. Nah, it'll be good. It'll, it'll be, be good. Fun, yeah. All right, thanks a lot, man. Have a good day. Yeah, thanks. See you, Bobby. Bobby Nightingale, Cincinnati Reds, uh, beat reporter for the Enquirer. Appreciate that so much. That guy was awesome. He once at, again at Nightingale Jr. on uh, on Twitter. 
Cincinnati.com. Go on there. You're going to find his, all the stuff he writes about. Like he said, there's going to be tons and tons of coverage on there tomorrow from him and the other beat writers. Um, they do an awesome job covering this team. That's gonna. I'm. I'm. I'm excited. I. I, I hope that he comes on again because I got so many more questions. Oh yeah, we could talk to him all night. I could yeah. talk Reds. I could talk Reds baseball longer, more than I could talk Xavier basketball. Mm-hmm. And, and I feel were, like we kept Adam Baum on here for for way too long too, and we probably kept him on too long. It was, you know, we're at thirty minutes 30 now, minutes, so right. I kind of feel yeah. bad taking these guys' time out like that. But I appreciate them doing it. I hope they know it. Uh, I'm gonna get some nosebleeds T-shirts made up for him. What do you think? We should do that. Yeah, we should do Definitely. that. Maybe Definitely. A, maybe a sweatshirt, jacket, maybe a hat. We'll just go. go into the box and see what we got over there. Hey, in look, the closet. Bobby do, Bobby works on a sport that that's during the summer, and Adam uh, works on a sport that's indoors. So we can throw him T-shirts. I'll throw. Well, I'll throw. Yeah, he's indoors. Yeah, T-shirts work for both. There you go. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I'll do a I'll do a special uh, uh, blue blue one for for Adam, and we'll do a, a red one for. Mr. Nightingale. There you go. That works. How cool would that be? I'm going to tell you right. So he went into broadcasting. He went to school to broad for broadcasting. Which Both is what us, you and I did. I, that's what I wanted to get into him. And I, you know, things slipped my mind as we're in these interviews, but I wanted to let him know that both that was what both of us Adam and I both wanted to get into broadcasting. That's what we did. Probably why we're sitting here talking into microphones to nobody right now. <laughs> I don't care who's listening. I got headphones on. I can hear myself. I can hear Adam. That's all I care about. And the only difference is Bobby finished school. Neither one of us neither, did. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. <laughs> that's why we're sitting here in your basement. And Bobby's, Bobby's getting the, paid. He's getting paid to sit and talk to Marty Brenneman. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. We love doing this anyway. That's exactly um, right. So, okay. So, Chris, I got to ask you. Now you and I can sit here and talk about the Reds all night, and and uh, but we it's more important for us to get somebody who's really smart and knows exactly everything that's going on, like Bobby. So so uh, we appreciate him, but just I just want to also get your opinion. What do you look What are you looking at for this season? Realistically, it, maybe we just talk standings in the NL Central. Okay, a record maybe. What, wh- how so, are you realistically feeling going into the season? All right, so we all know that I can be slightly unrealistic about my teams and what they're going to do. And you're a glass half full kind of guy? I'm 100% a glass. I'm a glass three quarters full. That thing can be half empty, and I'm still three quarters full in my <laughs> eyes. It's uh, beautiful. Yeah. So, anyway, um, you know, the Bengals are always going to win the Super Bowl. Reds are always going to win the World Series. I, I always take a bracket with Xavier winning the national championship, <laughs> even though they weren't in the tournament this year. <laughs> um, so, you know, but to, to be honest, I think this team has made a jump. I, I was been looking at a lot of different uh, uh, ranking systems, you know, ESPN and some other places, and they've got them like around the 14 to 21 mark, 14 to 20 mark. Hmm. That's way better than the Reds have been in a long time. Yeah, and if you look at that, that's over all of baseball. If you break that down, uh, they have them basically third or fourth in their division, but they're still in the top ten or twelve in the National League. If you look at some of these breakdowns, so I think that they're going to have a better season than we think. I think they're going to compete for a wild card. I, when I say compete for a wild card, I mean that they're going to be closer to five hundred. I still think they'll probably finish below five hundred, but you know that second wild card spot. You know, I don't, I don't know where that's going to end up. You know, maybe, 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 maybe that's not competing for a wild card. Maybe in my head, it's competing for a wild card. I'm, you know what? Screw it. Reds are winning the World Series. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> and uh, I love your optimism. Now, I am, uh, I'm not a glass three quarters full uh, guy myself. I, over the years, you know, I used to be very, very optimistic going into every season for the Reds. I, I love the team. And just over the years, I've gotten a better feel for how realistically teams are going to do with how they're structured and how the rest of the league looks. So, you know, honestly, I do feel like um, I, I agreed with Bobby, um, you know, that probably third is about the best we're looking at in this division. Um, I think I, most most of the experts, I guess, most of the media members seem like they're picking the Reds to finish like fourth, probably over the Pirates. 
Um, I, I feel like right now that they are a better team than the Pirates, just just with the moves they've made. They've, they've, their offense was a, a top-five offense in the National League last year, and it only got better. Mm-hmm. It only got better. And their pitching was the worst. It was historically bad. Like yeah. It was one of the worst pitching staffs in the history of Major League Baseball. And they dramatically in, in, improved that. This is the highest uh, salaried team the Reds have had ever. Um, mm-hmm. The 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 only one closer was 2015. So this is a this is a big year. The Reds are going all in, and I I I gotta think that they've got a lot of guys from teams that have won in the past. You got uh, a few guys from the Dodgers, and 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 that's got to breathe new life, a new a new manager. Every there's the, every everywhere you turn, there's new life breathed into this team. There's no reason that this team doesn't believe that they can make a run at anybody. Yeah, I, I think they. I think everybody feels I, I, certainly on that team from everybody's the way everybody's talked. Um, everybody feels like it's going to be a lot better this year, uh, as far as at, le- at least just wins, which is what it all boils down to. That's what everybody. That's what everybody wants to see. That's why you play. You're trying to win games. Um, so you know, on paper, right now, on paper, it looks a lot better. Right. Everybody's got to perform. They're still even with the you know everybody feels like the the rotation. The starting rotation is going to be a lot better, but there, you know, there are still question marks with everybody in that rotation. I mean, every there's nobody, there are no Cy Young winners on this rotation. There, you know, everybody has a question mark. We the potential is there to be a really good staff, really sure. good staff. Yeah. The potential is also there to have, you know, each guy has a season or two in his uh, in his career. Yeah, that that was not very good. So. You know, there's a very wide range for the possibilities that we could get from this rotation. Um, the bullpen is is pretty close to the same thing as last year. They did add Zach Duke, which is probably going to be a pretty good add, sure. I think. Um, adds another lefty uh, in that bullpen. Um, so, you know, the bullpen, I think, will be okay. I don't think it's going to be one of the best in the league or anything like that, but I don't think it's going to be one of the worst either. As long as you get Jared Hughes and David Hernandez pitched really well last year and um, you know, Iglesias, as long as he keeps uh, keeps going before before he gets traded at the deadline. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, is no, that is kidding. the closer position the most overrated position in all of baseball? I would say so. I mean, it's got to be right. For but me, I mean, yeah. but I mean, for anybody, be, especially this year, is going to be tough for uh, that's. Uh, man, I man, see another question. I got to write this thing down. I, I want to <laughs> get back in touch with Bobby Nightingale Jr. and ask him. What kind of woes the three man, uh, the three batter minimum is having uh, in baseball right now? What these managers are dealing with with the three batter minimum coming up? Because that is that does that's a com- makes your that completely changes the way you use your bullpen. That changes bullpens everything. have been used this a certain way for years now. It's I mean, we're going on ten years of these specialists. That uh, that are that are on it in every bullpen, and now it's not okay. You split your lefties and righties up in your in your batting order, so they have to just use one pitcher and then take them out. And it doesn't happen anymore. You bring a lefty in, he's got to face a righty. Mm-hmm. So this is gonna be a, it's gonna be interesting. Um, well, that's if they pass that rule, right? It's I thought not, it was. I thought that was a done deal. I don't think so. I think they're. I, I thought think that was a done messed- deal for this year. I, I think they're still no. I think they're trying it out in like the minors or something like that. I don't. I'm I don't sure think about that. I'm pretty sure. I don't think they just made the decision. I think they started. I thought that decision was made. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I somebody I, somebody I hope it's, somebody I hope hit it's us not. up. Let let us know if you're if you're watching or comment on it. Let us know. I, I thought that that was done. I thought that was the one thing they decided they were doing. I hope it's not because I don't like it at all. I hate that. That's the, that was the le- that was the rule <laughs> that of the rule changes I hate I like I hated the most. Yeah, I think so for me too. Um I'm you but know I'm what if you want to add if you want to add a pitch clock, I really have no problem with that. It just it, cuz it's only going to affect the guys they've that been are doing, really slow. And they've been doing it in the minors for years. All these young kids, they're quick anyway because sure. they've been doing it in the minors for years. It's just the old cats, the old hats that, you know, the the Justin Verlanders and guys like that that take their time out there when they can. Yeah. Um Okay, so okay, you know what? I'm glad you mentioned Justin Verlander. We spent a lot of time. We spent what 35 minutes or whatever on the Reds to start this thing. 
Let's talk really quickly. We don't have to talk about every team, but let's just talk about who we think is going to win each division, meaning who we think is going to, you know, is going to make the playoffs, and uh, who we think is going to win the World Series. Okay, so I'll give I'll give it a go. Uh, AL, uh, let's go. I'm going uh, Sox in the East, Strohs in the West, Indians in the Central, and uh, I'm and two I'm, wild cards. Two wild cards. I'm going Yankees. Obviously, got to go Yankees, but then this is where I'm. This is where I'm going to throw a little wrench in it. I love the Oakland A's. You are crazy because those are all of the exact no! same. That's no, awesome. That's no fun. Here's my paper no. right here. You can see I wrote the Oakland A's down. I was like, I don't. I think everybody. Everybody, Get I, out of here. I love that we just agreed with all of those, including the A's, because I don't think I think everybody's thinking that they're going to regress. I think everybody's thinking they're going to take a little step back because they were good last year. But <sighs> nobody ever knows anybody on their team. They're ju- they just put together. Billy Bean just puts together great teams and just has like a magical eye for scouting. What a bummer. I love it. I love it that we agreed okay. and we both had that All same, right. the exact same, the wild cards, the A's. All right, wow. well, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. I'm going the same way. I'm, I'm just going to jump them out. I'm going to throw them out there. We'll see what you do. do. Uh, Phillies in the East, Dodgers in the West, Cardinals in the Central, Braves, and of course, I'm gonna. we're not going to agree on this because I got the Reds as the second <laughs> wild card. <laughs> okay, we're quite a bit different in the National League. Nice. All right, cool. Let's okay. go with it. What do you got? You got um, a Nationals in there, don't you? Let me tell you, I'm so torn on pretty on almost every single division in the National League because there every division has two probably at least two teams that could win the division or be a wild card team. I think there are so many teams that are going to be good enough in the National League to win the wild card yeah. or win their division. In the East, let's start in the Central. I I pick the Cubs. I think that Milwaukee could. I don't know if they're going to be as good yeah, this the, year. The, the, dude, the Cardinals. The oh. Cardinals, exactly. I let me tell you that I picked the Cardinals as one of my wild card teams. Okay. okay. So no, so I'm good. I have the Cubs winning the division. I have the Cardinals. Boy, oh boy! If Tyler Roop is watching this, he is just on fire right now. So angry at us. Um, yeah, he is. He's not. <laughs> he's, he's, not he's, he's happy with you because you picked the Reds to make the playoffs. Sure, of course. Um, anyway, um, so I apologize, Tyler. I do have the Cardinals as a, as a wild card team and the Cubs to win the Central. Now I do. I did pick the Nationals. I wasn't going to, and then I started. I started watching or reading too much, uh, you know, of the experts, the media, the writers, and stuff, um, who they picked, and I let them talk me into the Nationals in the East. So I've got the Nationals in the East. Um, in the West, I have the Dodgers. I still think I, – I really like Colorado. I still think they're probably going to be good. I actually – I'm rooting, I think, for Colorado, although I do like the Dodgers too. Um, but I think, you know, of course, Kershaw as I'm long as he's healthy. I'm a big Colorado fan. I love Blackman. Charlie Blackman's one of my favorite – one of my one of my favorite players in baseball. Yeah, yeah, I love their entire lineup. They have a bunch of really good hitters. I mean, they're they might have the best lineup, honestly. I don't know, but one of them for sure. <laughs> we got a. I'm gonna si- tell you right now. I'm gonna tell you right now, dude. I can't get in this chair. <laughs> You've my, gotten in and out of that chair like three times already today. You don't right know now. how difficult it is to get in and out of this chair. All right, good. <laughs> we had a little broadcast interrupt on the Facebook Live. Okay. So I had to go over there. For some reason, my phone just decided it was going to turn Facebook Live off. So Chris Witt, we're back the, on. The uh, host and engineer of the Nosebleed Sports Podcast. So uh, I've got the Cubs, Nationals, Dodgers, two wildcard teams. Are the Cardinals – and I let everybody talk me into the Phillies, although I love the Braves and I want to see the Braves either win that division or make a wild card. I want to see them in the playoffs. I really like this Braves team. Some of those young guys, Acuna Jr., and, and uh, you know, they've just got a bunch of young guys that I think are, are, uh, are exciting, and I, I just I don't know. I've always kind of liked the Braves anyway, um, but I did not pick them in the National League. I went ahead and went with because I'm completely torn on this too. But I went ahead with the Nationals um, to win to represent the National League in the National League in the World Series. I should say in the National League. I, How I, many times are you gonna say National League? I, well, <laughs> it, it's tough because I said the Nationals and then they're representing the National League, and yeah. then I said in the National League. I, I feel you. The World I feel you. <laughs> so, um, and I'm also uh, among these at least four of the uh because i don't i don't think the a's are gonna are gonna go to the world series but i have them 
possibly winning, uh, you know, going in as a wild card. Red Sox, Astros, or Yankees, it's going to be one of those, I think, to represent the American League. I went ahead and went with the Astros. I really do think it's either one of those three. Um, and and I'm just whoever wins the American League, I think I'm taking them in the World Series. So are we doing we're doing I, I've been I've been up and down. So are we doing uh, 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 AL pennant and then World Series pennant and then World Series. I didn't do that. But okay, if you so we're do just that, doing World Series. Who do you think's in the World Series? Okay, my World Series is Red Sox, and I I, I wanted hard, to take the it? Phillies. I wanted to take the Phillies because I think they've done so much, but I. I they're too new. They're, there's a lot of new heads in there. I don't think that team wraps its head around what it's got in the in their um, in their clubhouse quite yet. Uh, the Dodgers, the Dodgers are so good, but yet they've moved a lot of pieces. I think things. Have, think I, I'm I'm going with the uh, Red Sox and honestly, I'm saying Red Sox and Reds, but <laughs> in my head. In my in my head, I I like this Cardinals team, man. Yeah. This Paul this this Goldschmidt signing to them just put to me puts them over the top. I think they are. I I just think they're a phenomenal team now. As I long think as this is it. Yeah. As long as their pitchers are a little bit more consistent, um, they you know I, they could have a decent rotation, but definitely a good lineup. They're the Cardinals. They just always win. It's one of those teams. They haven't made the World Series win. or the World Series. They haven't made the playoffs in two years. In two years, think about that. I You're know, saying in two I years. Know, How I many know, other I know, teams? I know. Can say. I, I know. <laughs> trust me. Trust me. I wish I was saying that. <clears throat> right. I wish I was saying that about my red legs. I think Paul Goldschmidt might be the MVP this year in the National League. I can I mean, see I, it happening. I think I. He's a great addition to that lineup. I think and he's, he's going to love for a winner. There. He's playing for a winner. He is. Yep. Yep. That guy is unbelievable. He is. I'm telling you right now. Him and Joey Votto, like I don't think Arizona really knows what they lost because that they guy, lost him and AJ Pollock too. They did. You're right, but but Goldschmidt is one of those guys who could have gone down if he did what Votto did and stayed with the Reds or stayed with uh, Arizona. He could have gone down as the greatest offensive Arizona Cardinal in. I mean, their their, their history is not that long. Diamondback, but yeah. What did I say? Cardinal. Whatever. <laughs> Arizona Diamondback. In their history, which isn't like I said, isn't that long? But they, you know, they've got a World Series. They've done things. But he, that dude's a he's a once in a generation type hitter. He's a Joe. Him and Joey Votto are once in a lifetime, once in a generation type hitters. Yeah. And I think Joey Votto is going to go down as the greatest hitter in Reds history. To be completely honest with you, I mean, it's hard to say that with Pete Rose being the all time hit king, mm -hmm. but Joey Votto. Is we we don't know we we talked about this last year so much. He had a down year last year, and the guy was like sixth in MVP voting. He, he led the National League in on base percentage That's again ridiculous. in a bad year. Hit two eighty four in a bad year. Um, so anyway, all right. Look, we're gonna we're, you know we're gonna move on to because we still have a lot of basketball to talk. Let's do it. Um, yeah, let's let's really get off quickly. Of this. Really quickly though, you mentioned all time hit king. Ichiro Suzuki, the Mariners uh, signed him to play those two games against the A's in Japan. Japan. It was perfectly done, and it was yeah, it was awesome. The the scene from taking him off the field in the last game, oh my gosh, incredible! Make you cry? Uh, you know, you know, yeah, those are the kind of things that dude, you know, that shit little, little misty. I just dropped an s bomb. That stuff tears me up all the time. A little, little, little misty, but uh, yeah. And he is so likable. I if you watch highlights of that guy, you're gonna love him. If you if you listen to um, accounts from from media members and teammates and stuff, everybody loves that guy. He's such a likable guy. Really funny from what everybody says. And it's and it, I just we're gonna miss because he retired. I believe he re retired um, after that. So um, he he's pretty much he done. Yeah, he did. So he's pretty much done. But. Um, but he's going to be around in baseball, I think. I mean, Seattle's just going to keep him around to do anything he wants to do. The guy still doesn't really speak that good of English. Do you think he's going to stay he's, in America? You think he's yeah, not going to go do. back home? No, I think he's going to stay here. I think he's going to stay here and work. Maybe he'll do a lot of uh, a lot of stuff in Japan, probably with baseball and stuff. But that's just the the travel. I mean, that's not like just flying from New York to California. Yeah, but dude. I, that's a 
It's not a seven hour flight. That's a that's like a thirteen, fourteen hour flight. He's not gonna go back and forth every week, but you know, I think he'll Dude, because he'll he'll have once a, a job. A year is too much. He he'll have a job here. I'm sure not for him. He the guy <laughs> has spent the last how many years of his life traveling like every three days. Yeah. Um so anyway, um I just I just love Ichiro Suzuki. I wanted to throw that out there. Um he is he is the all time hit king if you add his major league baseball hits and his professional Japanese hits. I know you don't want to talk about that. No, but no. Listen, I understand that. Okay, I understand you call but him. He, a, he but deserves that, to be if in the conversation as the greatest hit, one of the greatest hitters I, of all time. I got no problem with that. I, I'm just what I'm saying is I don't like the fact that you you, you can't say he's got more hits than Pete Rose. He was playing and listen, but, right? I'm, not major. Be, league I'm gonna hits, don't, don't hits, get me but, wrong. Don't get me wrong. Pete Rose. I used to love Pete Rose. I I I I, I ride or die for my boy Pete. Then you died. M- my boy Pete has slowly, every turn, just done something to irritate me a little bit. I mean, I still love the guy as a baseball player. He's a West Sider. He's a hard head, hard headed West Sider. He's he's just like everybody in our family that we know. He is what he is. Not really. He's not like people in our family. I take that back. <laughs> no, we, not at all. We, we like, don't know any. We, we don't have a ton of. It's not like our whole family. Cla- we have classier people. Yeah, we don't have a ton of like gambling uh, degenerates that that are that that are thirty years old and say, "Oh, she was fourteen. Well, she told me she was 16. <laughs> right, right, right. No, okay. So Ugh. that really, really, really that works that out. was the end of it for me. That was know, the yeah. absolute end of it for me. Anyway, let's get off of that. But it, what, what the thing is, 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 is each row, do you? If somebody were to get seven thousand hits in Japan, they wouldn't be the hit king. Well, it they were in there. Japan. I don't care. Sure, there. But that, if they had four thousand there and three thousand here, they wouldn't be the hit king. That's not how it works. You got to be if it was that the best of the difference. best, though. The best, okay, but the best of the best, man. I'm talking. You're you, playing the, the, the best of the best in Japan, and Japan's got some good baseball. They got good baseball, but it's not the best of the best. There, I mean, all their best. Okay, players Okay, it's the best of up, the best in Japan, but you, in Australia, here. it's the best of the best in, in Australia. If some dude gets six thousand hits in Australia, he's not the best hitter. But the difference I mean, could between be. the difference between Japan but unless baseball you do and Australian it, baseball, I mean, there are there are I, levels. Yes, obviously, it was a it was a dramatic. I'm sure it was a little <laughs> over dramatic. I apologize. But look, all the best Japanese players are coming to America, and I, and then that supports your point. But I'm also saying exactly. But they have players who are. I'm not really saying they're high. not really good. That's the next level. Uh, well, um, um, you know, Dominican Republic, that kind of stuff, in, in in Japan, those guys are all right there. But but everybody's here. Like all that, all the best of the best come here and make their money here and play here. That's what I mean when you do it here. And I think Ichiro probably, I don't know that he could have, but it would have been really daggone close. Oh, I, if he would have started his career in the United States. So, you know, props to him, but it didn't happen. (laughs) Right. I I just, I love Ichiro. I'm a big Ichiro fan. So I, yeah, I just wanted to, to give him a, I just wish one thing was different about Ichiro. What's that? Put your last name on the back of your jersey. That's not that's that's a that's a Japanese culture thing. They don't do that. Put the they don't la- do it. China, I don't China care. too. Put the last name on the back of your jersey, you ding dong. It's not. <laughs> There's no other Suzuki's over here. Throw Suzuki there on the were. back. There were Kurt Suzuki. Uh, there was yeah, another one. Kurt too. Suzuki. Yeah, he was a catcher. All right, well, the there's like 15 Johnsons and 37 Smiths. Who cares? It's not. It's not. It's not how they do it, man. So you put, put your, your first name on Yao it. Yao Ming right? had uh, Yao on the back of his jersey. I mean, it's the ja- the Japanese again, and Chinese cultures do the same thing. Put Ming on the back of your jersey, man. You're the only Ming in basketball. All right, that's besides yeah. the point. All right, so props to Mr. Suzuki. Congratulations <laughs> on your on your. I'm I'm talking with my hands now. Congratulations on your retirement. Let's get into college basketball. This is our favorite time of the year. It's April. It's college basketball tournament season. It's opening day. It's Reds baseball. It's for me. It's the 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 master or not the uh, yeah. It's 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 golf coming back. Uh, the Masters and all that good stuff. So you got a, a t- oh, it's so much sports. I love it. <laughs> We're getting close to the NBA uh, playoffs. NBA here. playoffs. Mm-hmm. So let's do what we do. We we voted on. Uh, we we ranked ourselves. We ranked ourselves. We we have a. We currently have a bracket. Uh, the Nosebleed Sports Podcasts uh, brackets. I am beating you 
at this moment in time. However, uh, it is it is currently uh, 47 to 45. At the same time, you have more potential points. I'm beating you by two, but you have two more pot- potential points than I do. I have Gonzaga winning the whole thing. You got Duke. This could get fun. I almost, this is going to come down to the end. I almost lost my team. <laughs> yes, almost, you did. I almost lost yes, you did. Uh, um, 90% of America almost lost their team. Right. That would have been terrible for this tournament. Honestly, it would have been terrible for this tournament because people watch this tournament based off brackets and things like that. And Duke is, I, I think, I, I don't know what the exact number is, but it's like almost 70% of the brackets had Duke winning. Mm-hmm. That You lose a lot of viewers going further. I don't know that you do. I, I think I think you do. I think this is the, I think this is one of those sporting events that no matter who's in it, you are going it's it's the it's it's the NCAA tournament. It's it doesn't it okay, doesn't matter for the first for the first two rounds. I agree with that. Further on down the line, if you don't have a chance at money, there's a lot of casual sports fans that are tuning out. Ca- casual people. But I think even, but that's but that's the majority. But even casual people are still going to watch the final four because it's the final four. I mean, it's if you don't have Duke in there, you have four other really good teams in there, and it, and it's just one of those. I think it's just one of those events that it's it do, no matter who's in, no matter who loses early, or what kind of uh, Cinderella teams or whatever what kind of upsets. Every single year, it's going to be top of the class with as far as viewership and as far as that kind of. Now, if you end up with Okay, if you end up with uh, Gonzaga, Texas Tech, or I don't even think that's possible, but mm, a, a nah. national championship, you know, it, you might not have the same viewers as you will if you get Duke Carolina in the national championship. Sure. But, but either way, it's the NCAA tournament. You're going to get tons and tons of people. I think if Duke made an early exit, I think maybe some people, but I think it's more than you think. I think really? it's more than you're the more than you put on. I think so personally but that's just me personally i don't what do what do i know i don't know i don't know anything uh so let's just do our picks all right in the east who do you got all right so uh, the sweet 16 you got duke virginia tech um i've got duke in that game advancing to the elite eight i think you have the same correct all right uh lsu michigan state um i have i have lsu upsetting michigan state although i don't necessarily really think that's going to happen but for this i that's that's what i chose so this is where I, this is where i got real screwed up because i got i got louisville beating lsu louisville obviously lost to minnesota in the first round therefore um out there but i am going to take michigan state right now just because i love tom izzo and how he yells at his how, how he yells at his players which we'll talk about is separately um, okay, so moving down to the uh, West, staying in the Sweet 16, Gonzaga, Florida State. I have Gonzaga in that game. Gonzaga here. I got Gonzaga all the way, so that's definitely me. Right, and then uh, Texas Tech. So it's Texas Tech, Michigan. I had Texas Tech, Nevada, um, but I have Texas Tech winning this game. See, this is going to be a big game for our picks because mm-hmm. I got Michigan winning that game. Okay. Yep. So this could be big. Yep. Um, okay, so then maybe we stay on the same side Let's and go back up to the Elite Eight. Yeah. Um, so then we have uh, – I have Duke LSU. You have Duke Michigan State. But who do you have winning that game? Uh, I've got Duke. So do I. Of course, I had Louisville in that game, but that's all right. <laughs> I'm still taking Duke. I'm taking Duke over Michigan State. Okay. Uh, so Gonzaga – I have Gonzaga Texas Tech. You have Gonzaga Michigan. I have Gonzaga winning that game. I have Gonzaga winning as well. Obviously, you do. Um, okay. So that's uh, we that's our Sweet 16 and lead it on that side. Going over to the south uh, Virginia, Oregon. Virginia uh, against K State, who lost in the first round once again. Chris, good job. I had, uh, yeah, I had them too actually. So uh, I was wrong about that Oregon game, but either way, I have Virginia. Um, down to Purdue, Tennessee. Uh, I had Villanova, Tennessee. But I had Nova, Tennessee, but I had Tennessee winning this game anyway. As did I. Uh, okay, on down to the Midwest. I yeah. think we were the same down here because I yeah. believe we both had UNC in, in Auburn. Correct. Auburn being uh, one of the hottest teams in basketball. They are still there. Uh, I have UNC, though, beating Auburn. I do, too. Uh, and then you have Houston, Kentucky. Could be an interesting game there. Yeah. Uh, that I, I, don't, I don't know how interesting. I, I tell you, there's a lot of U.K. fans around that are, that are nervous mm-hmm. about this game. Uh, but I think Kentucky's I, – I, I like Kentucky. I really like this Kentucky team. 
I got them in the I got them in the national championship. So obviously I like them. All right. Um, I did pick them to win that game as well. Back up to the south for the Elite Eight. Then you have Virginia, Tennessee, and I picked uh, Virginia there. You got Virginia. That's a pretty good pick right there. Although I took Tennessee. Okay. Also a pretty good pick. I like the uh, SEC. <laughs> I know you love the ACC. I like the SEC this year. I think their top teams are studs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. All right. Uh, And then down to Carolina, Kentucky, kind of one of those classic classic big-time program games. That's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. And I I think I like Carolina in that game, but I did pick Kentucky. I took this. Kentucky as well. Okay. I got Kentucky, Tennessee. I got SEC on the, on the right side of the bracket. There you go. And I'm taking Gonzaga all the way, although we don't have to talk about that because we will be on air before the Final Four gets here. So Sweet 16 Elite Eight will happen this weekend. We will not uh, talk to you till after then, but that's what our picks are. Uh, and we'll have a little more time next week to, to really get into the to the Final Four and, you know, if anything major happens in these. Unless we end up with another guest. We could end up with a college ba- another college. Maybe, maybe we uh, get a U.K. guy. In here, if uh, UK makes it to the uh, to the final four, maybe we get a maybe I, maybe we get a hold of a Gonzaga guy from from out west. Let's 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 go about it, man. We we've got we've got uh, beat writers on here every couple weeks. Let's just let's try to get some guests on here. I'll call uh, I'll either. Let's see who's in my phone. I've got John Stockton. I've got Adam. I was Morrison. thinking Bill Walton would be fun. Bill Walton, yeah, he um, loves those West Coast teams. He He's does. a big Gonzaga guy. Yeah, I mean he, he's uh, UCLA guy, but I mean he yeah. likes Gonzaga. He's, he's a pack. He's a Pac-10 guy, but yeah, he uh, he he is a West Coast guy for he's sure. A West Coast guy, he's a California. If guy. you can get Adam Morrison on this podcast, I will kiss you directly on the mouth. Okay, well that's a deterrent for me to want to get him on. But all right, well um, how about this? I, <laughs> if you get Adam Morrison on the podcast, then I, no, I I won't kiss you on the mouth. But what I will do, what I will do for you. Is kiss you on the cheek. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm gonna is make that my, better? I'm gonna make sure my beer's looking real nice that day. So I, I like little... I like a little frizz on my on my <laughs> on my uh, lips. <laughs> um, okay. So who knows? Maybe we do have somebody on next week. Um, not, no plan yet. But uh, speaking of that, thank you so much again to to Bobby Nightingale because he came on pretty short notice. He I just did. reached out to him a couple days ago and he. Uh, he got right back and said, I'd love to do it, and, and was awesome for us. It was the day before opening day. Couldn't have been better timing. We appreciate that more than anything. Check him out, Nightingale Jr., or at Nightingale Jr. on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can catch Adam at? At Adam Schmidt 44 I am at Sick With It. And I just want to say, mad props to, to at Sick With It. I sent a tweet <laughs> out today that had, Four ats and two hashtags in it. I'm like a tweeting machine, dude. You are. You're picking it up. You said a while ago you were going to try to try to really get it going, and uh, and you have. I mean, you've been you've been. Hey, I've you've been, been on I've been active on the Twitter. I want people to come pay attention to the Nosebleed Sports Podcast. We're doing big things. Uh, real quick before we get out, uh, shout out to. I want to send a shout out to a couple people. Uh, number one, Scotty Cotterman. Uh, down in Louisville, his daughter made national player, high school player of the year or player of the week in their region. Three bombs, twelve RBIs. Kid wow. was killing the ball. So big ups to to uh, to her. And also, um, actually, that's all I got, man. <laughs> okay, good. Shout out to everybody who did watch us on Facebook Live. We had some technical difficulties. difficulties. We edited uh, that thing out. We got back to this, and I think this is going to sound a little better, so we'll go from there. Hopefully, if you watch us on Facebook Live and we had some trouble, you you jumped on one of these podcast platforms and and, uh, you're listening to this. We kind of cleaned it up a little bit. Big props to you because you did all the work cleaning it up. No idea Um, if it's right or correct, but we'll find out when we listen tomorrow morning. We'll see. Hey, we appreciate it. Back in back live next week, Wednesday, 10.30, Facebook Live. And uh, don't forget to turn your headlights on.